Four. This is one more. Hello and welcome to Otra Por Favor. Otra Por Favor. Episodio número 23. 23. No lo puedo creer, ¿en serio? It's a, like Coke said earlier, MJ. <laughs> the MJ for, episode. For the GOAT episode. The GOAT episode. <laughs> Oye, oh, muy muñoz de la América. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another how, GOAT. How are you doing today, Chaparro? I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good. How are you doing? Good, uh, man. As you Happy can see, here. we have a new setup from the other setup. Uh, we're st testing things out. So we have our, you know, our uh, it's like a last minute guest. It's like, hey, you want to hop in? It's Coke. Coke. Appreciate it, guys. Always an honor to be here. So you guys heard him on the fourth episode, right? Yeah. Third fourth or fourth? Or third, 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 third episode yeah. with Gozi. Uh, Gozi, he is probably in Arizona or somewhere in another wedding that he's been going almost every weekend. Yeah, he goes <laughs> to so many weddings. You think he's going to be an expert by now. I know. <laughs> he's, tr he's like training for it, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to stay quiet because <laughs> I don't know how he will feel about it. I'm just kidding, Gozi. I love you. You know, we're just messing around here. So don't but take it personal. It's all good, man. <laughs> but hey, I mean. We're ready when you're ready. Lira told me, ¿Y la niño pa' cuándo? That's what, nah, just, we're not going to put out a boy like that, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> so how was everything for you guys? I know we, we right now, since we're having this new setup, we've pretty much been doing everything, I would say, every other week. We're going to try to go back to every other week. or It just depends on, you know, when you see the, the episode, we'll let you guys know ahead of time. Uh, one thing that we're doing is just testing out new equipment, testing out um, softwares and how everything sounds. So if it takes a little longer than usual, you know, sorry about that. Please be patient. Or, I mean, you can always just put your complaint at the BBB, you know, <laughs> that, what's that, business, Better Business Bureau Association, um, which they don't do anything anyways. Right. But, yeah, man, how how is, uh, how is everything for you guys this past couple of weeks? Go, okay, I'm going to let you start. Go ahead, man. Uh, it's been a bit of a recovery mode. I, I just got my LASIK eye surgery. Um, didn't know what to expect. I can I can see much better than before, but my vision's still a little blurry. And then getting back into physical activity, finally started going back to the gym. So my body's really feeling a lot of pain right now. But uh, I'm just glad to be here. You guys are making me feel better already. Yo, that's good, man. That's good. <laughs> that's good, man. We we've been missing you in soccer for sure. But um, I'm glad everything everything is done now, and uh, you're gonna be coming back. Yeah, so, man. Same you, with you, man. I don't know what the hell is wrong with you, but... Dude. Que le las orejas. <laughs> las orejas. <laughs> Lávate las orejas, Richie. Nah, <laughs> probably. No, nah, it's just... Uh, I, I, got a, I got an ear infection last week, and the whole weekend, up until, like, I would say Sunday, I was feeling good. But Thursday, we went, you know, I, I went to yeah. go with Sphere, hung out with Sphere, my chavala. I went my over chavala. there. I was going to bring the jersey, man, and I yeah. forgot, but... Right now. Mike, awesome. thank you. Uh, and I, I was, when we went to the parlor, I started, we we're eating pizza and I can just feel like my ear, like buzzing as I'm chewing and I'm like, oh, this sucks. And I got home, took a shower and knocked out, but I already know what it was. So I had some Advil that helped to sleep. And then the next day I pretty much did an appointment. They already know like, Hey, is this, you know, thing like an allergy thing, but you also like keep on going at it with the cotton swab. Mm. And big no no, according yeah. To the docs, according to the doctor. So I mean, they gave me some medicine that I've had in the past, and they helped out. Like by Saturday afternoon, I was good. So I feel like they also have drops, right? You can do drops. Yeah, yeah, it was just drops. Oh, it's drops. Well, they give me antibiotic, and they uh -huh. they give me the uh, like for the internal infection and for external. What is it? External. Para que mata los dos de una vez. Ah, hueso. But, yeah, man. Kills pink eye. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. so. <laughs> I like, uh, yeah. Yes, I don't know. I guess, but yeah. And then also, um, I've been so I'm also starting a photography business. Ooh. So I've been just testing out like everything uh, with the you know the cameras and stuff, getting ideas from people, and you know the whole the you want like a deep uh, focal length, you know, make the background blurry and all that stuff. So. Ooh. My man, man. An overall hustler, man. I know. Trying trying to master like, the, I gotta pay. I gotta craft. pay for that camera that I got, dude. dude. <laughs> El que no sabe esta cámara que está ahorita viéndonos es una cámara muy especial, muy buena de de paquete. 
Muy buena, Richie. Eh? Yeah, man. Hey, it's all good. So, it's yeah, so you know, I'm just going to start pimping out myself, you know, like <laughs> at Lamar and, and Runberg. There you go. And That's the me, spot. That's the spot. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> People told me before. <laughs> <laughs> We call Richie the butcher. In soccer, because he's really tough. El carnicero. Likes to chop people down, el carnicero, but really he's a scientist, man. He's This is his laboratory, and he's trying different and new things. And every every episode, you see the quality improve, and you see the, the visuals. So it's exciting, man. This is this is the man right here. <laughs> sometimes, yes. sometimes, yes. sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, man, and what about you, dude? Uh, man, you I... Were, you were, like, in a boat last... You know, while I, we're I here in a boat. Dying, you're in a boat. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't even notice on Thursday, man. My bad. I, I should have said something, but uh, I, I didn't notice. You, you, uh, you were quiet, good. though. Yeah. I, I noticed that, but <laughs> I thought something was going on, something different at that, and I didn't say anything. But, yeah, I went on the boat with um, Hannah's family, my girl's family, and, um, yeah, it was fun, man. It was uh, Lily's birthday. She's, uh, she's uh, Hannah's, uh, I guess, little cousin. Yeah. Um, um, did money win? No, she didn't. She was supposed to go, but she yeah. didn't go. Um, but yeah, it was fun, man. It was uh, a different location, a different boat than the one that we tried last time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, recommend that one too. How about a uh, money sister? She no, she wasn't there. there too. She was supposed to be there too, but she wasn't there. Um, but yeah, we had fun. Um, excuse me. Um, I really recommend that one. Actually, it's a bigger one. You can fit a lot of people on that one. So I think we should try that one next time. That's cool. Definitely. Is it bigger than the one that we went? Bigger, bigger, bigger. Yeah, way bigger. Okay. But you couldn't jump from the top. From the top. Yeah. It was an actual barge. Yeah. Like it was all covered. People. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was nice. Uh, they had a grill and everything. They grilled for us. Jeez. We ate there. Yeah, yeah. We even went to a little island yeah. on Lake Travis, and I actually jumped from a rock to the water. It was yeah. pretty deep. Oh shit! It's pretty scary, <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> um, but nobody recorded me, so so it doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but pretty much. Um, Ryan was there. Um, I, I feel I feel like he got scared for me. Like yeah. he was like, "Are you really gonna do it?" Because he, he looked pretty uh, scary. Yeah. How high was it? <laughs> it was pretty high. I don't know how high it was, but it was pretty high. And the thing is, there was rocks right on the oh on, yeah, on just, the side. Yeah. yeah, so you had to really land in the middle of it. You're not. <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Next but up, I, Acapulco. Got yeah. out. Right. <laughs> so, so los, oh, los del, 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 ¿cómo se llama? ¿O esa tinca la quebrada? Sí, sí. Yes. El que se hace, se hace el, el, el que el tantea el salto, ¿no? Tiene la facha de vato que se atrevía sí, la quebrada. Sí, 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 sí. No sé, güey. A lo mejor se atrevido, por sure. Sí. A lo mejor eh, unos cinco o seis años. Por la estatura, sí, ya la hiciste. <laughs> Pero no, todo bien. Um, my bad, I couldn't record last week um i wanted to but i had some shit going on at the house uh working at the house mm -hmm. and um, i had to do it so i couldn't get off early so yeah dude it's all right it's all right i think you know like it it kind of the timings always work out dude. sometimes like that gave me time to to work on on photo stuff too because i feel like every every week you have to constantly like when you want to do something you have to constantly work on yeah. one thing or two things at least twice a week if not So te va, you make it a habit of not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So I got to work on stuff that I did with Cisco. Uh, so nice. That's pretty good, man. Yeah, how was that? That was good. That was good. I uh, I learned that you you can't edit photos on JPEGs. It has to be raw. <laughs> Search. It has to be what? Raw. So raw. Not not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just for, for, for the community. The community. The community. No. So <laughs> photographers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, you you were cooking already. Like, <laughs> has to be what? <laughs> uh, so, you know, whenever you're editing a photo, they were saying you have to get the raw file just mm -hmm. because everything you want to edit, you know, it picks it up better in the software, I, I believe, than you know regular JPEG. So, like, it's not an Instagram filter. You don't want to do that. You actually want to like say a shirt. You were telling me. When the shirt is black, you don't want to have anything like a rainbow or white, you know, or like as 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 dark as you can make that shirt. Try to make it so that raw when you edit in raw, you can actually do that, and it is better. Because uh, there was some stuff that I sent to to Cisco, and I was just like, and I sent it to one of my boys, Pedro Rivas. If you're listening to this, he's actually a, a photographer, and I was like, hey, this is what I did. Is like, man, everything's good, 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 like shots and angles. 
but the uh the the shirt is the one that like it just throws it off because it's yeah. like a rainbow effect and i was like i didn't think about that and that's the <laughs> thing but right like little things that you learning to the yeah. process right there yeah and i'm pretty sure to there's, there's to gonna be something new that yeah. i'm like i'm working on and right, like, right oh dang like i didn't see that but it's a working i mean it's like like this you know every it's time like anything, there's yeah. a sound you yeah. always want to make it better so that's that's you yeah know. you don't want to hear richie farting here in the background and stuff <laughs> like that so like you know <laughs> so no i usually do the daily ones but silent ones so but that's yeah cool, cool. um yeah, episode yeah. 23 man so yeah we're gonna talk about austin fc that's pretty much our focus on it uh i know we we talk to we we've done several different topics um and every guest that has come thank you as always yes thank you and how do you guys feel when it comes up to let's just get to the uh, soccer part and yeah the strategy what do you guys think of of the team how they're playing like wh what do you what do you think of of the the part of josh wolf is doing a little more possession and a lot more like i would say side to side passing than actually making it more vertical or or has that like being a little more vertical we've seen that improve better what do you guys think well i i think whenever you try to put in an idea of soccer a football when it's very possession based very touch based you require players with the technical capacity to play that type of system mm -hmm. and we've seen it in the past through several several games different errors coming from the back Yes. where the players have given away easy balls where any other team would clear it or just hit the corners or hit it out, play it safe. So that's the type of risk you have when you play that type of style with the level of players that you currently have in an opening franchise season. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he's right. Um, and also, like like you were saying also, um, it looks like they're playing side to side instead of going vertical. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. only one that I see that plays vertical is that ring. Which is right in he's right in the middle. He's, the right. he's that one that usually wants to actually takes it vertical, but usually they use the lavandas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't I don't know if that's the start. The thing is, I don't really know if that's exactly what Wolf wants. Yeah, but that's how they've been playing though, most of the games. Yeah, most games they've been playing like yeah. that. Yeah, I think wide. I think he's trying to be um, possession with a, with a wide like you know. Those extremos, you know, yeah. the wingers yeah. making them, and I've seen, uh, I've seen the uh, the left back and the right backs overlap a little more, yes. Yes. like more confident. Now, always when you do that, you got to make sure that when you're defending, you're covered in the back. Right. Somebody um, comes back to cover for you. Yeah. yeah. I, that's the one thing that, that I notice is like you you said, I feel like at first the players struggle with that. That are very very right. tough, but if you get it right, like that yeah, style of play, it's, it's gonna beautiful. in the long term is gonna make the, the the game better for you. Right. Yeah. But but when you're starting, you know, with 22, 23 guys that have played f together for you know the first time and ever like forever, also very young players, too. true, very young players. Yeah. Of course, you're gonna struggle, you know, because you have a lot of those players are coming from from teams that play differently. And, and, you know, what I've seen is the defense comes out a little better from the back. Stuber is a little, you know, he's improved his feet. Uh, Romagna's, Romagna and Cascante, they're, they're a little more attentive every time there's a pass. And now one thing that we noticed why is because the second goal against Colorado, which was last week, mm -hmm. Tarbo is the one that messed up in that pass. But because we're used to doing it, running it with Stuber, mm -hmm. and, and it's been like clicking better. Um, now the one thing that I've, that I've been liking is whatever Ring is doing is sometimes going in between the two defenders, mm -hmm. which you know, uh, contention. contention. He should be doing that, right? Going between the defenders. He's trying to like covering that. And then right there. you're yeah. the one that brings the ball from the back to the half of the mm -hmm. field at least, mm -hmm. and he's doing that very well. And every time they, you know, they lose it, he comes back and and defend. Um, I, I'm just scared, man. Like, like the way that I, I understand that they want to play from the back, but it's really risky, especially if, if I mean, first of all, the, the the goalie has to be really good with his feet mm -hmm. to actually be able to do yeah. that. If you don't, it's 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 dangerous, man. And we've seen it before. Yeah, yeah, we've seen it before with Stewart. And I mean, he's a great goalie, but I feel like he still needs a little bit more he's learning to train. Yeah, on, yeah, on, on the touch. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think of the the left and right backs? Um, because 
we started the season with you know Ben Sweat ben being uh-huh. injured for for a long term, and the the right has been rotating with Jimenez and Lima. 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 Komenik has been doing very good on the left. Mm-hmm. You know he's a solid you know left back, but now we see either Lima or Jimenez come in and and rotate with Coma on on the left side. left side. What do you guys feel about that? Like, how do you guys, what do you guys think that they're doing in that side? Like you said, uh, 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 Ben Sweat was, got injured. I, I didn't see any difference, you know, because we really weren't able to see Ben Sweat playing like, a, you know, multiple games and see how he was like actually playing that position. But Lima, I feel like Lima did, did a perfect, a perfect job for the most part, like, Maybe like two or three games at the beginning, and yeah. he was doing like really good. But for some reason, man, after that fourth, fifth game, he went down and he wasn't the same level that, that that he started. And I guess that's why. I think he got injured. And, and he got injured, yeah. and then he met he managed right. Jimenez. Yeah, he Jimenez. managed. That's the one that came in, and I like him, man. I I He's really like player. the speed and 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 the quickness that he has. Do you like the, his uh, freckles? Cause like you. Like me, <laughs> of course, man. I love freckles, so yeah, man. Um, but no, like going back to uh, football, I, I feel like um, he's been <laughs> he's been doing he's been doing, like, oh <laughs> yeah, he's been doing like he b- he's been covering that position, yeah. and I feel like he just needs to get uh, more chances, you know, like playing more, and he's just gonna get better and better. And one thing, Kolmanek is uh, he's called for the Slovenian team to play the qualifiers. Good, that's right. Which is good. That's gonna I help mean, him. It's our first, I would say, our first uh, Austin FC player that gets called to a national team. Oh, okay. Um, right on. From Austin, like when from currently Austin playing Austin right FC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's big, dude. That's yeah. that's huge. So, it means they're looking at him and yeah. he's doing his job well. I mean, he's been one of the more solid players yeah. this whole season. So, Desde que Cecilio y redes pónganse las pilas, yeah, ganas. <laughs> yeah. Por favor, sí, porque son los que tenemos. Bueno, son los que deberían tener el peso, ¿no? ¿No yeah. crees? Sí, sí. De, 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 hacer, de hacer mejor las cosas, but they haven't been really helping the team, I feel like. So what do you think of the uh, the midfield? Because we started with a 4-3-3, mm-hmm. and now it's become a 4-2-3-1, for the most part. Um, with Ring and, and Pereira in the in middle, middle. For, for a good amount of the time. What do you guys feel of that? Those two, you know, in that way you don't leave Ring by himself, you know, doing all the work. Um, what do you guys feel Pereira is doing as as a young player? You know, he was drafted from straight from college, mm-hmm. and Ring, I mean, with his with his experience, he's kind of helped him. You know, in that position. Yeah, definitely. I definitely. I think having a player like Ring is super important to the team because it helps a lot of those young players establish themselves and gain the confidence and and kind of understand the game to that higher level. Mm-hmm. Um, also, just leaving Ring by himself in the middle, he seemed to be kind of putting a lot of weight on his yeah. shoulders, man. Mm-hmm. Like, he's already, like, the leader of the team. Mm-hmm. Plus, you got to, like, go up and down, win win balls, distribute balls. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it, it's, a lot, it's a lot to ask for him mm-hmm. day, day in and day out, you know, like, you know, game after game after game. So, I think Pereira helping him in the middle has been, has been a great – it's been a good ad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. I, I feel like uh, – it just gives a, a little bit more solid. You know, when we defend, it's it, it looks a little bit more solid having two people that just haven't ring yeah. have to get the ball back. You know, it looks more solid in the back. But um, I I feel like Pereira just needs to needs to help a little bit more because usually uh, I see ring running more than 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 he is and he's younger. It should so. be the opposite. Yeah, way. that's what <laughs> I'm saying. So um, I mean, I know ring is the leader, so he's he's doing it because he's gonna do it right, mm-hmm. but. You being as a young player, I feel like um, you just need to show a little bit more. And but yeah, I like I like having the four two three better four, than three, the four, four three three. Two, yeah, four, four three, three, three three. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think of now the the, the, the line above them, which is it ro- usually it usually uh, that one rotates the most. I feel Drusy. because you have Drusy, you have. Um, Cecilio, Fagundes, and, and the, Toto, that, you know, the, between those four, it feels like that there's a lot of, you know, rotation. I like I like Drusi being in the middle, Fagundes on the right, and Cecilio on the left, mm-hmm. when he can actually, you know, 
whenever he he está está concentrado. Mm -hmm. um, he can be a really good. He can be a really good yeah. player because that's how that's he playing America on the left side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I heard a lot of people saying that he was really good in America because yeah. he will play on the left, not yeah. in the middle right now that he's playing. And I can see I can see him more like starting from the left and running towards the middle than starting from the middle and going in the middle. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. he's definitely one of those players that, that he's more comfortable cutting in right. than just being One that straight. point of attack right. at the front, waiting for the ball, waiting to finish, waiting to do that. He's he's more he likes to come in and, and you know use his attacking abilities from that from that angle. But definitely that attacking third ha has the most. I think we have the most depth there. So there's been more rotations. You know, there's there's quality players that we've gotten this season. So. They've been used and they've actually been like Drusi. I've been really impressed with him. Yeah. yeah, I think he's the one that has been holding us yeah. on the top. You can tell Man, the quality yeah. of ever since Drusi <laughs> came, <laughs> it's yeah. just like the it looks team. Different. Yeah. Looks him different. and Digi like Digi Digi every Digi time Digi they play together, yeah. man, it, the, the team is yeah. different. And I think they just needed that something different, something yeah. fresh. Um, they got it. And also Gallagher, I mean, the first guy, the, the guy that scored the first goal, yeah. you know, in the, in, the, in the stadium, him and Strout. Um, Stroud has been more benched lately. I still feel like he, if you literally push him, he can have a lot more to offer. I mean, he had really good games, I remember. At first, but then yeah. he had really bad games, yeah. too. So he's like, uh, yeah, consistency, yeah. you know? We need that to be the same every game. But then we also had the same with Cecilio. Right, but that's had, what I'm saying. But yeah. but the thing is, you're not going to bench Cecilio over Stroud, right? So it's, right, right. Well, I mean, I mean? There, was, there was a point in time where we needed every player that can be available because <laughs> yeah, exactly. everybody True. was injured. Right, so. right. Yeah, dealing with a lot of injuries, yeah. for sure. And consistency, I feel like it's the hardest thing in anything we do, right. especially especially soccer. You know, I mean, you train every day, right? So you have to kind of get in that mentality to be the same, do the same yeah. hustle, the same every game, every, every, every uh, training. Uh, and I feel like if you do that, th there's nothing else that we can ask for. I feel yeah. like uh, when we see when we see when we see a player that they put every game and he plays the same way, I mean, good. Um, there's no need for him to be benched, you know. Yeah. But if you see that he's not playing well, obviously, another person has to get out, the yeah. chance um, to so, prove himself. On that subject, yeah. do you kind of agree with some of the changes that, that Wolf has done? Like some of the rotations he's done when he's like played away games versus, you know, kind of a stacked schedule? And that's exactly what what I was going to ask. I mean, are, are you all happy with the, you I, know, the way that he's I, handling I, uh, that? I feel like he shouldn't. He should have a, like a set team. A solid. Yeah, solid yeah. 11, 11, 11 player team to actually go everywhere, like play home or play away. And if it doesn't work, that's when you start making the changes. But 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 for a moment, I, I thought that he he did, really didn't have that. He didn't have an eleven starting, starting players. eleven. Yeah, yeah. Starting I 11. mean, some players got injured, and then your bench started getting injured too. Uh, it was it I was mean, it was. A, he wasn't good for Danny well. Hosen, <laughs> yeah. and we also had um, Ben Sweat, mm -hmm. Segura get injured, and then another guy, Aaron Schofield, also got injured. And that's I mean we have. I haven't even seen we haven't Schofield really seen play. players right it's like yeah. i think he only played two games and then he got injured in april or, or june um but i think with wolf is i always want to give the coach and the benefit of the doubt um but sometimes it's hard to you know to not defend him but, mm -hmm. but to to give him that benefit whenever you see him do changes like how he did against minnesota against Dallas and yeah. against Colorado on the away games because I, for me, it's, if I already know, like, something worked out the first, the, the previous, like, one game, right, I'm going to do the same for the next game. And then if I see a player that needs rotation, I'll rotate them out. Um, with Dallas, that was a lot of people, you know, they, they were upset because we came out all in as fans, you know. We brought in a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And then the starting lineup, it was just like, what the what? heck? <laughs> it was so different, right? Caught by surprise. Yeah, yeah it <laughs> caught everybody by surprise, and uh, I, we were actually on the on Ernie's. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, right what there. do you call it? The uh, what is the thing called? We were like in the in the bicycle thing, and we were. Uh, oh, the uh, pedal pedal brewery. Pedal, yeah, yeah, that one. So I was trying to 
keep up keep up with the game, but it was like hard enough because we were partying. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I watched the game. Dedicated <laughs> fan over here. Right. But I, yeah. I, I watched the game when I came home, <laughs> and it was just the changes, man. That that messed him up because he had a and he had a very good game against Portland. The, mm. they, yeah. like the week before or beat right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, well, but that's that's the thing, though. Uh, I mean, do you think he was like really just testing, testing the players on that game, or testing whoever he was gonna put on that? Game, but I, I think you you can't test. It's like you can't fix what works out. And I mean, I just feel like he probably wanted to see these other players, you know? Yeah, but why why would you? So for me, it's like why would you change that? If you, especially if you're losing so many yeah, games. Yeah. Like, I understand if you were winning, you know, you were winning Do it. three games in a row or right. tie, win, tie. You have a little more of a positive record. Mm -hmm. Then you can do the changes, a, you know, hey, I'm going to bring in three players and substitute, out, you know, the other three out. But keep the same, at least the same formation, but not yeah. make it a 5-3-2. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, <laughs> what the heck is this? What the heck? Yeah. Um, and And that happened the same with... With Colorado, we beat LA. Uh, we mm. beat Galaxy. I, I know. I just couldn't and understand that, how that. How that we go happens. to the same idea, and yeah, it's just right. like it, I, I think experience is one thing, but it's just like those calls right there. Yes, you want to give people the chance, which is great, right? But there's a time and a place when to give those chances. Mm -hmm. I mean, being being a coach is freaking hard. I mean, yeah. it's a hot seat. It's, yeah, it's like, the most pressured. You position. have to make decisions and. I think he has made the wrong decisions those, on those games, and we can. I mean, we can all see it, and and he. I'm, I'm pretty sure he sees it, and hope. I hope he sees it. Yeah. And he's like learning from it, and not. <laughs> well, he did it what two, three times, maybe. So it's yeah, like three times. Come on, wow. dude! What's going on here? Like, yeah, we need we need to fix this, and you have a team that is been winning games, and then you go to. Uh, another uh, team's cancha, and then you change the team, and we lose. So, like, come on, it's common sense, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I know we put a lot of pressure to the to the uh, coaches, but that's what we do. We're fans, you know. Yeah, we're always gonna be there. So, reg regardless, right? We lose or win, but we're gonna put the pressure on you so you can make the r the right decision. So, it's tough love. Yeah, it's what it is. I mean, do you think that? The, the fans are, are, are kind of lose. I mean, we we talked to a lot of people about the games and how they're feeling about yeah. the coach and stuff, and I feel like through every consecutive loss, away loss especially, there's been a little bit of the confidence and, and uh, backing of Wolf that has kind of decreased. Mm -hmm. Some people even going as far as saying, all right, this, out. He, he should Wolf be out. out. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's a bit premature. It's season one. True. Um, but definitely, like if if um, you're not learning from from the mistakes, then it it kind of puts you on the on the edge. True. Yeah, because then like us that we want to not 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 to have like I would say uh, an agenda to oh back them up, but it's more like a you know first season you have to you have to understand what he's trying to do, and you want to do it, and then he comes with those changes and like wolf, come on, man. Yeah, I think <laughs> season one, it's kind of a pilot season, right? It's the first right. one. What we, what I personally would, would, would wanted to see the most is an idea, yeah. the idea of football, and that the players understood it and, and, and backed it. Even if, even if you lost, if you saw that the idea was there yeah. and it was like something consistent, even if you didn't get the result, that would be more encouraging. But when you see changes to the formations, changes to the starting lineup, and – inconsistency that's when you kind of lose the confidence in a team a little bit do you guys feel like there's the idea now or is this there's is it still lacking i think we're getting there mm -hmm. um yeah there's something going on now the, yeah, yeah we're getting there because i mean we were we all agreed at the beginning that there was no idea of play. Mm -hmm. there was yeah. fucking like seriously the players were doing what they can on the field but they didn't know exactly what they needed to do mm -hmm. they were just there and when you're a, a player, a soccer player, uh, you just try to, to do something, right? Mm -hmm. But you, if, if there's no tactics, there's no uh, idea of what you have to do. Um, first of all, you're not going to score goals because that's what it was happening to us. 
the players weren't shooting from the outside. They had to get all the way into the uh, area so so they can shoot. Yeah, there was no shots outside, and and all that. Now it looks like it has changed. You know, I mean, we we've been scoring from the outside because they're shooting more. Yeah, um, we're passing the ball better for sure. We're moving better, communicating better. So it's I feel like there's something going on now. But I mean. It's what game? What's the man? I, at this at this point, I can't remember the game. Right. I just so know. I just know there's uh, seven games, five games left for this. Five games check. left. Yeah, five so games like, left. So and it makes sense, like you said, it's a new team, new right. coach, right. new everything. So we have to be patient in a way. But I mean, how much do we need? How much do we we can take? You know. Yeah. So here's one thing that I was saying. Uh, I was thinking of when Colorado. When you play them, right? Mm-hmm. Why are you gonna make all those changes when you have a little bit more than a season left to finish this season? Like, I understand if it was mid-season, you know, but you're literally like by 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 November they're gonna have a good two-month break, you know, three-month break, and they're gonna come back and play the U.S. Cup, uh, the Lamar Hunt. Mm-hmm. So, why? Why make those changes now? Like, just bring everybody on board. Like, don't leave any player, you know, like, don't give them a, a day off. Because they're going to have the day off regardless. Drusi didn't go. Fagunas didn't go. Um, I forgot the other player that didn't go. But 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 do you do you think uh, he talks to the players? Like, he asks, hey, how are you feeling today? Like, are you going to give me uh, the 110% that I need today? Or do but, they? But I think, I think more I mean, like at least giving them like having them travel with the team is it because like they like say for example mm-hmm. on sundays we already know like if, if you know you come you come to the, to the game como que se siente que va a haber, even if you're in, in the bench there's that or even if you're not gonna play you're yeah. injured you know just the fact that you're there like the and there like the support yeah you know it's like oh my boys are here you know and, and i think it's just even if you're not gonna play them at least make them travel so Yes, they're gonna get their time off. You wanted to give them the the, the 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 day off, or you know, but you're in the season, and and that could have been you know. There's times that I feel like you can't do those changes, or you can't let people rest when you're almost done with the season. Like it's really hard for me to believe that if uh, the the coaching staff were to ask these players. Are you gonna give a hundred percent in Colorado for them to say, you know no. what? No. Mm-hmm. Unless there's a lingering injury or something that they're nursing. Right. Yeah. So you see it all the time in in, in, in the European leagues, like these players play so much, dude. They yeah. play mm-hmm. so many tournaments, so many games, national games. Right. And they wanna keep playing. Yeah. Yeah, they so never want to stop. That's why it's hard for me to believe that a professional player here on Austin FC mm-hmm. is gonna say, Hey, you know what? Um, I, I can. I, I'm not going to give 100 percent at this yeah. Colorado game. I need rest. Yeah. So I think that that's why it makes me think that it's more of a coaching decision yeah. to say we're going to rotate our players. You're right? going to be off, and you're going to be off. Right. And yeah, I, I just don't think that comes from the players. I think that comes more from the coaching. Staff. Yeah. And I, I think at least make them travel, like as a coach. Like I'm, I'm saying more for Wolf, like in his decision to leave the players there, like leave them here. Just yeah. no, it's. You should be the one that like, hey guys, let's all go, you know? Right. Because be in the, be in the be on the side. You yeah, know? like, you like just be there. Yeah. If you look at like, say, whenever you see the Barcelona players, they're they're all injured. There. They're all there. I mean, they travel right. with the team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So I I think that he could keep an idea because starting next mm-hmm. year, mm-hmm. it's gonna be a busier schedule. I mean, there's a lot more games. You know, more tournaments. Right. More tournaments. And then after that, the League's Cup is going to be in 2023. So you're going to add a lot more. So you have to understand, that, like, hey, tienes que agarrarte y bring everybody. Like, yeah. you, you can't. Everybody has to be on their best game. Yeah. So, But that's the thing, though. You know, um, well, for me, for example, like, we're used to watching different soccer, you know, than, yeah. than MLS. And, and, and I guess that's why we have a, a I don't want to say a different mentality, but a different kind of view perspective you know? yeah because because uh obviously I, I watch la liga and and uh league one and um you know europe and all that and it's it's obviously a better 
um, better leagues than the MLS, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously. So we, we, I don't know if, well, sometimes I, I probably thinking too much and I'm like, I want them to play like this, yeah. but they're playing like this. And, and being MLS, we have to remember that. And, and, and it's that I feel like the way that they're playing, they're playing good at the MLS yeah. level, you know? So that's what we need to keep in mind too. Cause I, I, I tend to forget that. Uh, I think individually they're doing good. Yes. For sure. Collectively, yeah. that's when, when, you know, it, it, the, the one pass, you can see, you know, some of the players are actually very good at carrying the ball. Um, even Romagna, whenever he has a chance to carry it. Okay. But there's just some passes como que se le van. Uh, Cascante is also good. Um, but that's the thing, though. Those those are the players that you can really uh, want, want to. Want, you want them to actually take the ball mm -hmm. all the way because they're defenders. You, right, you right. You really don't want that. Right. You know? but, but like say, like what I'm saying is like holding it and then making like – one or two dribbles. Like, not take it all the way in, but at least para sacarla. Because sometimes when you're getting attacked, and you need to calm down and, like, say, the, since they play possession, mm -hmm. possession means you keep the ball as much as you can and you pass it around. And and I, and with these players, they can do the holding and, and you know, getting the ball there. Mm -hmm. But I feel like whenever it's a time that the player makes, the, like, the run, it's a, a little bit... Off in the yeah. back or a little too, too much strong. in the front. Yeah, yeah like yeah. The, the pass. Yeah, I see, I see that too. Yeah, it happens a lot to, to the defenders especially. But, um, yeah, the final third is always the most difficult yeah. because you have the least amount of space, the most amount of pressure, and you, you have to be, like, very, very fine with your touch and your runs and everything has to be perfect timing. I feel like in the back, you got a lot more space, you got a lot more width. Easier to make a good pass in right. the midfield too. You got midfield. You got so many options mm -hmm. back, forward. But once you're in the front, it's it's the toughest one. I mean, yeah. And and a you lot gotta of finish. Like, yeah. I mean, you gotta finish. Like, you gotta yeah, finish yeah, the play yeah, at least. Finish. You just yeah. have to finish. It. it happens to us. It happens to us. Like Friday. We're, yeah, yeah, Friday, yeah, Saturday, yeah, yeah. It's like we get so many opportunities, but, but how we many miss of those we score? Yeah, we're, exactly. We're, like, it, it's been tough, man. Nah, and it's just like I think for me is like David was saying. Cuando tienes que ver la jugada, cábala. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, sometimes you can't want to be passing it to everybody. You have the shot, take it. Whether you blow it out, at least you know it's going to finish on their side of the court. Not going to be a rebote y luego te hacen a contra golpe. Porque we've had times that they 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 mm -hmm. do we do hit, take yes. a shot or we don't take the shot and they, and they take it counter. from us mm -hmm. and we get a counter attack and they scored. Yeah, I've seen it a lot of times actually, yeah. So it's a like it's a decision making right there at yeah. the end. And, and le, le ha pasado mucho a los a los jugadores que creemos que tienen esa mentalidad. Por ejemplo, como uh, uh, este Cecilio. Uh -huh. um, el único que sí he visto que, que, que termina a huevo las jugadas a veces es el po Pochettino. Sí. Oh, el porque Pochettino. es el que le pega bien, según no. Y, le, y las veces no que ha terminado. Según no espérate, mamá. espérate, espérate. <risa> lo, lo digo según porque era. Era el que supuestamente iba a tirar nuestros tiros libres, era el que iba yeah. a tirar todo esto, y al finalmente no, no terminó no, siendo así. Sí. Uh, pero este es el único que he visto que en realidad termina la jugada. Al momento que agarra, pum, chutea. Sí. Y es lo que necesita hacer, básicamente. Y al sí. final ahí ya es todo. Termina la jugada. Fuck it. Yeah. Tiene, tiene confianza en su técnica. Yeah. La verdad sí. es que el Porcetino viene, viene con esa mentalidad que va a terminar la jugada. Y creo que le falta eso a otros jugadores. Mm -hmm. One thing that I noticed is um, with Pochettino, he's so technical that a lot of times the his teammates wouldn't understand what he was trying to do, or they didn't follow along. Like I saw him several times, you know, trying to make a pass to someone, and it would just be like some players would be static, mm -hmm. and then when we make like the you know come next to him or you know, it would just like wait for him and. And he, you can see him, just like, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult it's with international a hard thing. International yeah. football like this, like, I imagine if he was an, talking to another Argentinian or the Spanish speaker, he'd be like, he'd be able to tell him exactly what he was trying to do. But you know, you're you're, you're playing with players from all over the world, so you yeah. wonder if there's like that difficult of. Now the one thing with when Drusi came, that's when Pochettino and he improved. Because oh, yeah. now, I don't know if you noticed that after the second, third game, like Drusi playing, 
It was a different Pochettino. Porque son argentinos, boludo. <laughs> puede que sea, puede que sea, puede que no. Pero, I mean, you see him now, he's more calm. Yeah. Ya no tira tantos manotazos, he doesn't get fed up. He's not, you know, complaining to his team. I teammates. feel like he was just too much pressure. He, he, was, he was, was pressured. Pressure. He was yeah. pressured. Yeah. Yeah. Drusi might have came to the team Took and that relieved, it, yeah. relieved the pressure. Yeah. 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 And it's good that we're, we're signing quality players like that that can, you know, <laughs> Make for sure our squad more comfortable and relaxed and willing to play together. Yeah, and then like the top, you know, we didn't finish the the for the formation or or whatnot. But Digite, man, him coming in, that's like he was like I, so the coaching staff. You know, there's a lot of work to be done, but the physical aspect, like these players, for what they've gone through, they're actually like in very good shape. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen these guys. They run, they hustle. You don't see them walk. Maybe Cecilio, but I mean, that's is Cecilio. Yeah. Uh, however, you, these guys, man, when it comes up to that, you know, that physicality, and it comes up to like being in shape, they're in very good shape. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I feel like they played the same level the whole game. The you whole know? game. Yeah, the whole game. I, I noticed that too. Yeah. I feel like they're training. <laughs> they're training good. Yeah, it could be the the diet. You yeah. know, they're giving them. Digite was not playing for a while, wow. and then yeah. he comes in, and two months later, he's playing maybe 20, 30 minutes, scores for his first goal, and right now he's you know like he probably came in a little heavy set, mm -hmm. and he he lost some weight, and he looks pretty good. But a lot of these players, even though like. That maybe the technicality is not there, mm -hmm. the physical aspect is there, and that's important when you're in the MLS. Yeah, it's very physical. Very so physical. let me ask you this: If the conditioning is there, what wh what do you think is the cause of some of those f games where we were we were up in the first half and the second half? They dieron la vuelta. Confianza, descuidos, descuidos. confianza y descuidos se confían. Because yeah. like, I can see that they confían yeah. de repente and they're like, oh shit, what happened? Like. Yeah, because I see Cascante look like I don't know what happened. Like. Yeah, and it's yeah. and it's kind of like it's just this isn't this isn't the pelea, right? And, mm -hmm. and uh, you blink, you te meten oh, en trancaso, <laughs> que no esperabas. Canelo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I feel like like you know like uh, that's what happened. Y, y es, tal vez como que les les falta barrio y estar al tiro todo el tiempo. But es la conf el, este el you know the the no, not, it's not even the mentality because they they're, they're not afraid to play. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just the uh, se les va la onda luego. The concentration at the end of the yeah. game. It's it's not so much physical fatigue; it's more mental fatigue. Yeah, that's a that's the toughest thing to to get as a team and to train for because you know it takes multiple games of pre high pressure situations of holding leads of you know dando la vuelta you know like you know coming from behind mm -hmm. all those things build your mental mental aptitude but uh with a young team a new team i think that's something that we definitely need to grow in next it, season it takes a while yeah yeah but i think that's what it is man and let's say one one example you know i think we talk a lot about cecilia because cecilia has played most of the games yeah and i'm gonna give you two two uh i hate comparing but this is going to be a good point of comparison not not to like bring one or the other say one is better or not, but like Fagundes, every time Fagundes loses the ball, mm -hmm. he comes back and he does. He chases the hell yeah, out of the guy in the he's back. He's a dog, man. Yeah. He he don't he, care. He like he, dog, I mean, from the and beginning, Le Pegas, are. he does almost literally the same stuff that Cecilio could do. Le Pegas lo tiran, se levanta el vato y le pega al otro vato. Mm -hmm. But Cecilio. <laughs> Cecilio, this is a C. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot of fans. I've seen a lot of like fans actually complaining about him because yeah. of that. Because yeah. he's like a Ronaldo in a way, you know, that they barely touch and they throw a la, like a Neymar, you know. He burned. No, no, say Ronaldo se aguanta los trancas. Neymar todavía te la creo, pero. Porque Ronaldo se aguanta piscinazos, and I feel like. Um, Cecilio Bro, does that sometimes, you know. Es, que es el barrio que te da con el, ¿sabes cómo inventarte? Pero, but, but no, I, yeah, I, I get what you're yeah. saying. It, it's true. Fagundes, he hustles. No, no. With with the reason why is mm -hmm. every time Cecilio se deja caer o lo tiran por por algo, he falls down. The players are paying attention to him mm -hmm. instead of paying attention to the the play, mm -hmm. and that's when they get scored. Yeah. I've seen it a couple of times where, because of 
what they're happened with Cecilio, yeah. they worry more about what happened to him and trying to get his, like, see, looking at his reaction than, like, following the play. Maybe one or two guys. Cascante, you always seen him coming mm -hmm. back and, and Romagna and Goldmanic. But sometimes everybody's just, like, looking at Cecilio. No, dude, get up. I mean, get up. And uh, but what do you think? Do you think Cecilio's the star of the team? Like, the, the, star, the main guy? Because he's, he's, because he he started so yeah, many I, games. I feel yeah. like I think Wolf, he's definitely one of the faces, Wolf, the faces of the team. Yeah. Wolf have made it seem like that. I feel like. Yeah. But I think Wolf is trying if, to if give him that. Yeah, that Wolf is trying to give him that confidence. That, yeah, yeah, Wolf is trying. To, uh, but I I think Wolf is pretty much saying like, okay, dude, this is you had every opportunity you you, you know you can get. Now when it comes to the new season, mm -hmm. that's when the evaluation is gonna come. Whether he's gonna stay or not. Obviously, he likes him. He sees something in him that, you know, that we've seen from America. Mm -hmm. And he can do very good. Pero también se desconcentra y se deja caer. O lo tocas un ratito. Y, o una falta que no era. O, aunque, aunque es la falta, sigue la jugada. I mean, let, if the ref is going to mess it up, he's going to mess it up. But it's not on you, you know? Yeah. And, and I think with him is he has the potential to be the star. But it's where the emotions win. Is it, is it the, 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 the guy with mo like the most experience? Or what do you nah, think? nah, I think the one with the most, ex is most right? experience in the team is Beisler or Beasley. Tarbo. Well, because right. Beisler, I mean, he's, been, he's already 36, right. 35. He's older, but yeah, I mean, but. Uh, I he's mean, already gone to a World Cup, you know, called it for a World Cup mm -hmm. too. So, um, But I, I think. The, for me, the the best player is Druzy. Yeah, obviously, right now, he's the one. I, I feel like he's the one holding the team together, you know. Especially on the hard games, he's the one that yeah. stands out. You know, yeah, he's the one you can see him. It's crazy he how, how quickly he's adapted to, to the game. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess he came from playing at a, at a pretty high level, so mm -hmm. it wasn't that difficult for him. But a lot of times you see new players come in, and it takes them, like, a while to get adapted into the game. Like, yeah. maybe a few seasons, mm -hmm. or maybe at all, you know. But I'm glad I'm glad he's on the squad, and I'm glad he's doing good things and scoring and creating creating chances for everybody else, you know. And you, you see it kind of uh, spread to the different mm -hmm. players because you even have the, the hometown kid who scored. Um, I fr I'm, I'm blanking on his name right now. It's the uh, McKenzie. Well, McKenzie. Yeah. He came in with fire, dude. You can Another imagine. addition, man. Another addition. And it's to great. The team. Like, yeah. That's a beautiful story. And mm -hmm. to hear someone from Round Rock or whatever, all yeah. the Austin area, yeah. yeah, do well, you know, score in a in a home game. That imagine what that would feel like, you know, scoring in your hometown and the crowd going wild and you know, leaving with a win under your belt. That's gonna do. Uh, give him miles of confidence. Like, so. Yeah, that's all he needs, and that's the, the thing that we need. We need a player like that, a sub player that, when he comes in, it's a different dynamic. Yeah. Right, and that's it. You know, for sure, uh, superstar bench. Yeah, yeah exactly. Bench that's player. exactly what you need. Yeah. yeah, we need we need a depth in the bench for sure. Mm -hmm. Because man, I mean, we were for a while like it was. We didn't have no options. We we didn't have well, yeah. not, some players were injured, and it was just like. Tough, dude. Like it was nothing there. So, but ahorita, I think Drusi did you take coming in? Uh, for me, Drusi when he walks into the pitch, mm -hmm. he's in another different like level. Like you can when he walks in, his his demeanor as he's walking in and playing, he's never looking down. Mm -hmm. He's always looking up and, and always you know como que sal tiro de, de del partido. Yeah. And yeah, he probably misses one or two passes, but the way he I, th what I think what I what I'm thinking happened before he came. He they're probably giving him a, giving him as much much information of the team as possible. Yeah, because he came in feeling like he knew what was going on. Like no vino no vino de este no vino a verlo. perdido no yeah, vino no vino a ver, no, uh -huh. a ver que había. He, he knew kind of knew. Right? He had an idea of yeah. what was going on, how he can help him out, mm -hmm. and and that's that's a player that cares for for the team. For his players, you know, for his teammates, and same with DJT, they probably told him, "Look, man, this is what we need. We need you to be the number nine, que le pega aunque la huele, pero le pega mm -hmm. y la metes." And tiene tiene como como este Oribe Peralta o hasta Luis García que la que si le, le, le volteaban y tiro. <laughs> sí, puede ser. I mean, if you look at it, he he is not afraid of mm -hmm. shooting the ball. 
or you know. El, el nueve, the number nine, ha, can't be scared of yeah, shooting the ball. Yeah, he can't. Y no le tiene miedo a pegarle. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that that I liked is the fact that he came in just shooting. Like. Look, look for example, look at Suarez, man. Like he's he yeah. gets the ball, and he shoots, bro. Yeah. No matter Shoot. how or with what <laughs> he will hit the ball, you know. So that's that's exactly a number that has to always think. I'm gonna score. I'm gonna score. I'm gonna score. That's it. Este, another one like I know it's a questionable one, but Chicharito, I said, le same, pega same thing with está, anything, bro. Le, lo, se está tirando y, y, y la mete. That's what I'm, That's exactly what a number nine has to. Do. That's all you have to do. That's yeah. your job, for sure. You definitely got to have that ultimate confidence. Mm -hmm. que te va a salir una, uno de tus tiros te va a salir. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now, what do you guys think of of? Uh, do you guys feel like Whoop should continue or he should move on? You know, or he should be here for a long term or not? No, I, I definitely think he should continue. Um, it's been a difficult season for him and. There's a lot of things that uh, need to be learned from. Uh, but I think the players are going to be way more prepared next year. The coaching staff is going to be prepared next year to be more competitive. Um, I think the goal this year was just to create a cohesive system, and they're starting to get there. But at least, you know, one more season of, of Wolf, in my opinion, would, would would be is warranted. You know, he's shown glimpses, glimpses of – Of, of good team play, of, of some results. Mm -hmm. And it's been difficult. There's been a lot of disappointing losses. But uh, as an opening franchise season, uh, opening franchise team, you know, you have to you have to give them the benefit of the doubt and give them that second season, Yeah, in my opinion. Your opinion. That's a good one. What do you think, Chaparro? Um, I mean, uh, I just want con consistency, you know, from him. Like, um, if he wants to continue, um, he needs to have that mentality that uh, i'm gonna have a an 11 star player team that um is gonna compete mm -hmm. and and i feel like he's getting there he's getting uh the players to to understand what he wants to do mm -hmm. and 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 i feel like i don't know if we if if, if in the middle of the, of, the, of the next season they can or often fc can actually change a coach or whatever but i feel like at least we can give him that yeah i think they can change coach i mean it, it has to be well he was mm -hmm. at atlanta y lo, y lo afuera, so. but that's what i'm saying que le den que le den un poquito más mira son muchos juegos hay mucho 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 mucha temporada por delante no entonces yo creo que dándole uh, otra probadita de lo que ya ya vio cómo está la, la cosa de la mls ya vio los jugadores que tiene porque ya no va a tener excusa diciendo no, somos un equipo nuevo, no, ahora ya los conoces a los jugadores, ahora ya sabes a quién tienes para jugar, entonces lo que tienes que hacer es, estos son mis jugadores esto es lo que vamos a hacer y los jugadores tienen que entenderlo muy bien para demostrarlo en el campo that's what I think and I feel like if they give him like like a good I don't know, 10 games maybe of the new season and if, if it doesn't change, if we keep getting the same that we're getting right yeah. now Yeah. I feel like he should be out. That's that's what I can right. say. I yeah. could do the same thing. Yeah. Um, what do you think of, do you guys feel like the injuries that we had compared, I mean, we had four injuries, you know. I don't know, like, how much how much impact do you guys feel like that caused in a team? Because there were positions like the number nine, con este, mm -hmm. Denny Hosen, yeah. Ben Sweat. And Schofield, I think he's another midfielder. Mm -hmm. And Segura, he's a midfielder. What uh, what do you guys, how do you guys feel like that impacted the, the team overall? I, I just feel like it wasn't really an impact because I, I, to tell you, I really, some of them I really didn't get to see mm -hmm. play a lot. So it was like maybe a game or two. Yeah. And that was it. So it was barely at the beginning of the season too. So I didn't have that chance to actually you know, see what the player had and and, and w what he was going to bring to the team. Mm -hmm. And and when the other players came in, the ones that were injured and covered their position, I, f I was able to, like, see them more and see what they had or whatever. And I feel like there wasn't really um, a, 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 like a difference on the team because, like I said, I wasn't able to see the players play more than... than yeah, I would say the... Uh, The difference would, would be that you lose depth in that position, yeah. so you don't have the ability of someone to come off the bench as 
in that same position with that same quality. But I would say that the players that we lost due to injury were not necessarily that much greater than what we ended up exactly. playing with. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, yeah. there, it's not a big enough difference to say the injuries caused us to, you know, lose all these games or, you know, not be as good of a team as we could have been. I think I think we, we dealt with them in a good way. Um, I wouldn't say that, that 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 it was like a big impact to the team. Yeah. I, I feel like maybe what we what we lost it was presence. Maybe the mm-hmm. names are a little bit more more way to it, right. but it wasn't uh futbolistico, you know. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't like una característica de lo que perdimos. It was just the name I think of the player that we lost. Mm-hmm. But at the end it wasn't a big impact. I feel like yeah. that's cool. I can I can I feel, I feel that I feel that and last but not least the fans let's let's uh what do you guys, what do you guys think because so the reason why is you, we've seen another like the the older teams you know that have uh, LAFC has a very good st- strong st- fan base Galaxy has a strong fan base Atlanta has a strong fan base Na- like say Portland Seattle and and uh, Austin is competing in one of those top four, top five uh, fan bases in, in the nation. What do you guys feel? How much impact has whenever the players come to the team? What do you guys think? Do you guys feel like the impact of the fans, the support, has encouraged the players to to Better. improve, mm-hmm. or, do, or do you guys feel like les vale? No, I, I I think it's amazing. The fan base here is is incredible. I mean, I'm from Houston, uh, born and raised in Houston, and I moved to Austin in 2009. And let me tell you, the people in Houston <laughs> are <laughs> they will if the if the results are not coming in, they they will be very uh, clear about their disappointment and uh, very clear about uh, you know they'll ride with you on the good times. Mm-hmm. You, you just look at different sports. You look at you look at the Astros. When they were having those mm. difficult seasons, Minute Maid was not very packed. Yeah. When they were having great seasons, of course, it's always going to be packed. Same yeah. thing with the Rockets. Mm-hmm. And same thing with, with the Dynamo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that just goes to show you that, the, that the, the people of Austin are more ride or die. You know what I'm saying? So I think in a, I think in a way a lot of other fan bases are kind of – they kind of look at us and say, like, why are they cheering so hard? You know, mm-hmm. why, why do they support this team so much? Like – they're not even that, here, like the own not, fans and doing here. that great. Yeah. You know, but it's this is a special thing in a special city and, and, and we're choosing to back it and support it. You know, we're critical. We we, we have we have criticisms of, of the coaching, of the team, of players, but I think uh I think the city has more love um than some of these other fan bases. So that's why we can compete with uh Teams like Atlanta, Austin, F- or LAFC, LA Galaxy, mm-hmm. more established teams. You know, we th- this is a special moment in a special city. So, I think as a whole, uh, we we we've chosen to back it and, and really support it in our yeah. own way. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, especially, I mean, I, I just want to give a shout out to Los Verdes yeah. and La Murga. I mean, those they're fucking there every time and they're cheering, dude. Yeah. Like, it's it's Non-stop. it's just amazing. They, they create yeah, yeah, yeah. the environment of the of the stadium for sure. That's and what makes a, going to, going to the game incredible. Yeah, just nonstop chants and cheers and standing up and down. The energy it just feeds it feeds the whole stadium, and that's what makes the experience of going to the Q two just one of a kind. Hell yeah, one yeah, of a kind. yeah. And, and and that's the thing. Imagine imagine how the players feel when they fucking hear them. Yeah, either, either going off like that. Like you should like if you're tired. Right there, you shouldn't be tired when you hear that shit. You like yeah. going for it, and 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 I feel like, in a way, it's helping the team. I mean, that the Morgan, the Reds, and every fan that it goes to the team to the games or whatever, it's actually pushing the players to actually go above and beyond to actually mm-hmm. get a result mm-hmm. for us. You mm-hmm. know, because I don't know if you see them, but when we when when we lose, we're we're still out there. Right, and sometimes the players, I don't know if they feel uh, ashamed. I don't know what they feel, but they're they don't want to. They usually come and, and say thank you or whatever, or, or, or wave their hands. But sometimes when they lose, they just go and 
some straight, players straight just go straight room. to the locker room and it's I tough. Mean, yeah it, it's tough to have that character w- right. especially when you lose right uh, yeah. to 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 mostrar, mostrar la cara right you know, dar la cara, dar la cara. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's 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 really hard mm-hmm. um, but definitely i think i think the fact that the fans are there even even during tough results right. it, it makes the players feel more accountable exactly like they feel more of the responsibility mm-hmm. that hey this isn't just a, a job this isn't just like somewhere i play this is this means something to the city so uh, this is austin fc that's that's, it that's what them, it is it gives them that push for the next week to to come out and yeah. and, and, and win it back you know what i mean so yeah it's it's a great thing dude I love I love the chances that I've gotten to go to the games, especially with you guys. It's, it's been uh, it's been it's been a cool. It's, it's a memorable year. Something that I'll never forget, you mm-hmm. know. And I, and I can't wait for these next five games and the next season for sure. Yeah, man. It's uh, I uh, I've, I've gone to like hung out with a couple of Los Verdes, you know, members, and it's just their their idea of, of supporting is like yeah. It's it's, it's golden, man. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's golden. I I appreciate every moment, you know, especially after the games. You know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure for them, is a lot of these guys are not getting paid. A lot of these guys, those better in Hamburga. Right. The anthem, too, um, even though they don't do much. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ching <Shots> out. <fired. laughs> Everything was good, but then you had to say that. Okay, nah. go. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Uh, no, but, but like, let's say, um, nah, actually, Anthem, I got to look for you guys. <laughs> uh, but he, he said it. Not <laughs> right, right. Nah, they are, uh, so, it, it's it's just like, they, they're, man, they, they just, they have love for the team. They have love for, for everything, you know, that's Austin FC. And now they're actually not just doing Austin FC, but they're actually going to, some of them are go to, go to the Bolt Stadium. Mm, yeah. I mean, to the Bolt games. And some of them actually even go to the UT women's soccer games. I, I saw that. Yeah. Which oh, is, really? yeah, yeah, they are. They they had a, they had Los Verdes were at the, uh, not this past week, but I think the, two weeks ago. Before, yeah. They were at the game, too. and I was like. They were changing that's, everything. That's, I mean, that's. Yeah. Um, that's cra- That's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, you're expanding your, your thing because now you're going to push other universities to do the same thing. Exactly. Because, you know, Cause, you know right. and Los Verdes is not just a, like a toy, you know, supporting group like oh, now nah, they're no, solid no. dude like yeah, the communication yeah. they have even the security like when it comes up to the games yeah they have a couple of people in charge of looking out making sure when they people come like come here to the stadium mm-hmm. sorry there's no altercations they de-escalate things quick um yeah they like everything happened. pacific for sure yeah. yes yes they they i mean w- obviously what happened in, in houston is unfortunate right uh, el Batallon, but we didn't have control of that though yeah and even like whenever that one dallas guy yeah. came and he he wanted to start something right i mean yeah we were talking you know mess to him but but they nothing, happened, cool though. And nothing yeah, happened nothing i happened, mean though. it could have been worse yeah, if yeah, it was yeah. like in houston that guy mm-hmm. would have been jumped by now yeah um <laughs> but I, I, and, and i and i literally like like this guy's right here the one thing that i that i can see is you know you want to welcome anyone that comes out of town Always. Obviously. I mean, we you saw the LAFC guys yeah. that came. We were hanging out with them. Mm-hmm. But any supporter that comes from other time, other other places here as a visitor, mm-hmm. you respect us because we re, we're gonna respect you. Yeah. You know, we're not gonna. Yeah, we might talk trash trash about the game, or right. you know, like we might have the little like man, like forget Dallas or forget uh, you know Houston, mm-hmm. but it's always gonna be um, respectful. We're never gonna. They're never. I mean, even, you know, I consider myself part of Los Verdes because I have my membership <laughs> after six months. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, dude, six months. No way, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been <laughs> claiming Los Verdes for a while, and I'm like, oh, shit. oh crap, I did not pay my dues. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> so, uh, hey, no, but like, like you're saying, yeah, we want to, we want every barra to like feel welcome, you yeah. know, when they come to the Q2 stadium. And these guys are making it welcome for yeah. them. Um, yeah. With the LA, like with the Galaxy game, no, no, no pedos, like yeah. everybody was cool. LAFC, same thing. And I mean, they're from LA, you know. <laughs> I even, you know, cholos. Yeah. Así que watch out. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I, I wish, you know, like other, other, if this doesn't happen, like other teams in the MLS could follow this lead, you know, or we can be the ones that bring it up. And, and especially even now that the US team is playing tomorrow against Jamaica here. Yeah. Some of those better are going to be working, you know, on the stands. So, 
that's pretty good, man. I, I I appreciate all the work they do. Um, and the fans, even just a regular fan that buys a ticket, you know, right, right. they they get uh every time there's a chant or there's a song, le meten y le gritan. There are some fans that want to just sit back and and right, watch right, the game and not do anything. Mm -hmm. That's understandable. Uh, you know, el el mundo se hace de todos. Right. But you know, it's just when you get there, there's like a like a whole different vibe. Even when we're losing, you know. It sucks, but when we win, se celebran los goles como si... No, como si fuera el último, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, and, 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 uh, and I feel like that's that's what we want at the end of the day. Like, we want to support, you know, till the end, even though sometimes we get mad because we're losing and, yeah. and we're mad because the coach made a, mad, uh, a wrong decision or we're mad because the player missed the, uh, an easy goal, whatever, we're... Like the fans are gonna be there. We're gonna be there, you know, and and um, that I mean that's that's what we're there for, you know, to support and um, yeah. But uh, los verdes, la murga, shout out to them. I mean, and the anthem, the okay. anthem. <laughs> um, son los que los que traen el puto pinche party. La neta. <laughs> so yeah, and and uh, I mean, anything else you guys want to add to to this conversation? Yeah, yeah, I think. Parting thoughts, uh, for sure, groups like Los Verdes, uh, La Murga, Anthem, you know, they, they, they've truly shown a commitment to to the city of Austin mm -hmm. as a whole. I didn't know that they were, uh, you know, going out to uh, Texas women's games and, uh, and bold games. That just shows that it goes beyond the Austin FC realm. Right. I get a true commitment to the city and the community. Um, and I think that that kind of thing, uh, that kind of passion just grows and you know everybody shares it. Like you're now an official verde. You might Verdes you or, might la, or la murga. I here. know. Like Actually, we, I'm thinking next time I'm gonna bring those like los those verdes. Verdes. All right, All right. Back. but we have a little bit over here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's, uh, hot oh yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but also to add, you know, yeah. you guys have started otra por favor. You know, with with a a goal in mind, an intention in mind. You know, to bring communities together you know bringing different types of speakers from different backgrounds you know from similar backgrounds to us latin america everywhere yeah um and that just shows a commitment to to us as a people as well so that type of stuff is respected i mean we feed off of this energy mm -hmm. um and 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 we, we can only we can only grow from there you know oh, yeah. I, th I think uh one thing that i wanna i have in mind and i've actually been thinking for a while but i'm waiting for just to talk to the right people is uh to have a an episode recorded at Hop Squad, and then you know us we're of course like in a seat in the camera, mm -hmm. and then have Los Verdes in the back, but have people that you know are like the big you know, I think Los Capos you know there's there's so many people that, that lead that team like oh, have yeah. them hop in on the mic and yeah 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 see how they feel I think that's that's one of my my dreams after the season's over and there's you know not about a lot of stuff going on right. Um, I already have an idea who to talk to, mm -hmm. so for I'm sure. gonna send him an email first. Yeah. Like, hey, what's going on? Let's do this. So slide I would say after the, the season, yeah, <laughs> I know I'm gonna slide into the DMs, <laughs> um, babe. I am gonna slide into the DM <laughs> for you. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm. That's the plan, dude. I think it would be cool to do that. I've been. I know Hop Squad is pretty open to do things, and they're gonna be, you know, slow by the time the games they're are really down. Yeah. So. I mean, I mean, even when we started, that that was the the first the stop first that we would made yeah. with everything, oh, with all, sure. yeah. And it, I think that will no, be a good, that, yeah, that, a good thing to do. I feel like it's just right. So yeah. that, that'll be that'll be cool, you know. Uh, record an episode where everybody's in the back, and mm -hmm. you know, they're all doing their chance, and we can barely hear the mic, but yeah. it'll be all right. I think we got enough. We got equipment mm -hmm. where we can fade out some some <laughs> background sounds. But yeah, man. Um, you know, thank you for listening. Uh, Chaparro, anything else si, you want to si, say? Si. Thank you. Thank you uh, for all the listeners. Thank you, um, Koke. You've been listening to our episodes from the beginning. Yeah, sure, we appreciate day that. One, day one support. <laughs> yes. Um, gracias a todos por, por, por seguirnos. Acuérdense, síganos ahí en las redes sociales. Ahí estamos. Really easy. <laughs> otra, por favor. En otra, por favor, com. Ahí estamos también. Chequenos en Spotify. We're right there. Follow us and, and just really thankful for you guys. Keep listening. And if you got engaged and you pay for your wedding, I mean, your engagement ring, and it's expensive, you need a cheap photographer. 
Yeah. Richie's <laughs> here. My dude, Richie's right here. Yes. What a plug. <laughs> know, right? Richie, give your uh, social media. Come on, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Hey, share, just share send it to uh, Otra Por Favor or, you know, <laughs> Richie and the E at the end and then Con85. Uh, but yeah, man, the, the photography business is going to be the one sponsoring the podcast. Ooh, <laughs> let's so, go. Well, first we get clients, so. Raza, hey, güey, yo, yo te voy a sostener la lámpara, güey. Sí. Just, just let me know when. Güey, <laughs> you know, here, cooking in the back with like one of those French hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dando yeah, dirección yeah, yeah. and stuff. Directions but, are good. Hey, good things coming up. Uh, just keep following and keep listening and we'll be here. Arle, mamá, aquí estoy. Arle, <laughs> bye.